Goblin launch detected. This video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. With free weekly content and free shipping on orders over $150, you can save 5% site wide by using the promo code MTGMUDSTA. I'm also sponsored by Face to Face Games, Canada's premier Magic the Gathering store. Using the promo code MTGMUDSTA will get you 5% off site wide, with eligible orders getting free shipping Canada wide. If you're looking for a direct way to help the channel, please consider joining my Patreon and becoming a member of the generic Goblin Gang. Hey gang and welcome back. In today's game, we're taking out our secret Santa decks for a spin again, and I've changed up my commander. This time I'm playing Zephara, keeping two planes, Ravnica at war, Duskrider Falcon, Oblation, Shared Triumph, and Avon Warhawk. Maximus is playing his Avern of the Chaos Bloom deck, keeping Highland Forest, a forest, an island, Sweet Gum Recluse, Rain and Riches, Ethereum Horn Sorcerer, and Release to the Winds. Mika's also decided to shift it up, playing Liesa, and keeps Caves of Koilos, Sign and Blood, Ambition's Cost, Warlock Class, Exotic Orchard, and Two Swamps. Kevin's got the new Garna, keeping Evolving Wilds, Akum Refuge, Annex Hardened in the Forge, Woe Strider, Golgari Thug, Dread Summons, and a Tragic Slip. Mika wins the die roll and starts us off. He draws, playing a Swamp, and casting Warlock Class. Kevin plays an Evolving Wilds, sacrificing it and passing. I've got a Plains return and pass after that. Max plays a tapped Highland Forest. Mika plays a Swamp and then levels up Warlock class and looks at his top three, putting one to hand and the rest into his graveyard. Kevin plays an Akum Refuge, which comes in tapped and gains him one. For my turn, I play a Plains and then cast Soul Ring. I then bring out my favorite, Dusk Rider Falcon, and pass after that. Max plays a Terramorphic Expanse and passes. Mika draws, playing Exotic Orchard. He then plays Kuneros, passing to Kevin. Kevin draws and plays a Golgari Thug, but unfortunately doesn't have a land and has to pass. I draw and cast a High Sentinels of Ereshin. Without a land drop though, I pass as well, and on my end step, Max sacrifices the Terramorphic Expanse to find a mountain. Max's turn has him playing an island, and then has enough for Averna, and passes once his commander resolves. Mika plays a Caves of Koilos. He then pays 3 for a Vampire Nighthawk, passing to Kevin after that. Kevin's only one turn behind as he plays a tapped Dross Forge Bridge. He then pays 2 for a Reassembling Skeleton, and passes to me. I also find a land, Plane of Plains, and then cast Shared Triumph, naming birds as it comes in. Going to combat, I swing the Falcon at Mika for two, which he can't block thanks to Pearl Black, and I pass after that. Maximus draws and plays a Forest. With nothing else, he passes. Mika's got a Plains for turn, and goes to combat, swinging Kuneros at me and the Nighthawk at Kevin. We both take our hits, with Mika gaining five. In his post-combat main phase, Mika plays Liesa and passes. Kevin draws and then casts Annex. He's missed yet another land drop though, as he passes to me. I draw and play Battle Screech. Once my bird tokens have resolved, I then tap four flyers and a white to cast Safara, passing after that. Max draws and plays a mountain. He's got enough mana for rain and riches, making two treasures as enters and passes. Mika draws, going straight to combat. He swings his commander at Kevin, the Night Hawk at Maximus, and Canaris at me again. 
We all take the hits, with Mika gaining 10 life from his lifelinkers. In his post-combat main phase, Mika plays an Angel of Destiny and passes to Kevin. Kevin draws and goes to combat. He swings the Golgari thug at me, asking if I can block, and I gladly do a Sephara. The thug goes into his graveyard and on top of Kevin's library because of its ability. And he then casts a tragic slip. He uses it to kill the Angel of Destiny. Kevin also gets a Satyr token from Annex and passes. I draw and go to combat. I swing Safara at Mika, who can't block, and he takes the hit for 7. I gain 7 life as well and pass to Maximus after that. Maximus draws and plays an island. He then casts an Ethereum Horn Sorcerer and cascades into Descent in Avernus. He also gets to put a Mountain into play from Averna, passing after that. Mika draws and pays 2 to cast Sign in Blood, losing 4, 2 from Lies, and 2 from the spell to draw 2. He then plays a Secluded Step, which comes in tapped, and sanctifies Max's Reign and Riches. Maximus responds, sacrificing two treasures to cast Release in the Wind, and targets Reign of Riches. He then gets to Cascade as well, he hits Inevitable Betrayal, and once more targets Mika. He puts to field the Platinum Angel, and then exiles the Reign of Riches. Mika then goes to combat, swinging Lies at Maximus, who doesn't block, and takes the 5. Mika gains 5, and in his second main phase, casts Children of Corlys. Kevin draws for turn, and casts Curse of Disturbance on Mika. Still missing land drops though, he has to pass. I draw and play an Avon Warhawk, revealing a Wind Brisk Raptor and a Syndicate Messenger to his Amplify trigger for 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters. Going to combat, I swing the Dusk Rider Falcon at Mika for 2. He takes the hit, as if he has a choice, and I pass after that. On Maximus's upkeep, the Descent triggers, and we put 2 counters onto it, and then each make 2 treasures and take 2 damage. Maximus then draws and recasts the Rain and Riches from Exile for free, and makes 2 more treasure tokens. He uses 1 treasure to help cast Omnath, Locus of Rage, which has him cascading into a Rosethorn Acolyte. He decides to save the 2 life though, and doesn't cast it, bottoming all the cards he exiled instead. Maximus then plays a Mountain, making a 5-5 Elemental token, and passes his turn. Mika's got a Bajuka Bog for turn, which comes in tapped, and exiles my graveyard because of Battle Screech. He then follows up by casting Font of Agonies, and then an Underworld Coinsmith. For combat, Mika swings Lias at Kevin, who takes the hit for 5. Mika gains 5, and then plays Drana, Liberator of Malakir, in his post-combat main phase before passing. Kevin draws, and thanks to Max's descent into Avernus, finally has some mana, and casts his commander, Garna. Sadly he still hasn't drawn into a land though, and has to pass after that. My turn has a glorious anthem coming in, and I then go to combat. I swing my Duskrider Falcon again at Mika, who takes the hit. After that, I pass, and during my end step, Max activates his Ethereum Horn Sorcerer to bounce it back to his hand. Maximus's descent triggers on his upkeep, adding two more counters, and we then make four treasures, and we all take four. Max then draws for turn, and plays a forest, making an elemental token. Moving to combat, he swings his other elemental at me to try and kill it off, and I block with Safara, gaining 7. Maximus gets the Omnath trigger to deal 3, and targets the Underworld's Coinsmith with its trigger. This has Mika responding by activating it 3 times, to deal 3 to everyone. In response to the activations, Maximus flashes in a Sweet Glum Recluse in response, using a treasure to get an additional Cascade. He hits Volcanic Torrent first, which in turn cascades into a Fires of Yabamaya. 
The torrent then resolves, dealing three to all opposing creatures. With Kevin's creatures dying and Garna seeing it, Kevin's opponents each take four. Maximus then drops to zero because of the coinsmith triggers, but is still alive thanks to the Platinum Angel. Maximus then casts a Crystal Shard, and recasts the Ethereum Horn Sorcerer. He cascades, hitting a Wayfarer's Bobble, and dropping to minus nine after all the Liesa triggers. Finally resolve, Maximus passes. Mika draws and plays Ambition's Cost, drawing three and losing three. He then plays a Plains and casts Dismantling Wave, and Max pleads for the Platinum Angel so he doesn't die on the spot. Mika takes the deal and instead destroys the Curse of Disturbance, Glorious Anthem, and Rain in Witches. With only one blocker available though, Mika decides not to attack and passes. Kevin draws and then plays Carter, goading all of his opponents into attacking each other. And once that resolves, cast Chittering Witch, making three Wrath Tokens while he still has three opponents. After that, Kevin passes, and on his end step, I take Max out to Pasture by using Obelation on the Platinum Angel, which shuffles it into Mika's library and lets him draw two cards incidentally. I draw, and in my main phase, cast Ravnica at War, exiling Carter and Liesa. I then play Divine Sacrament, but don't meet the threshold part of it, and move to combat. I'm forced to swing everything at Mika, and play off Rally the Wings to untap them and make sure it's lethal. Kevin is stuck on three lands, and looking at a board of unblocked, indestructible creatures, scoops it up as well. Game review time. So apparently when your commander is able to grant almost your entire team indestructible, it's pretty good in a budget deck. That's no sled against the Falconer since you know banding is so good, but Safara is way, way, way better. Maximus' Averna deck is doing exactly what I wanted it to do, which is basically just cascading. There's a lot of enablers in the deck that help cascading cards, and there's a lot of cards that help give cards that don't have cascade, cascade. I'm surprised at Garnish showing again. Kevin even upped the land base after he got the okay from all of us to change the deck up even just a bit, having increased the amount of lands to 38. He just did not get there, and by the time that he did, and he could actually benefit from Garna being out and draw some cards, the game was all but over. Liesa continues to show just how powerful she is by existing. The amount of damage that people take adds up so quickly, and all of a sudden people's turns of wanting to cast two or three spells are gonna hurt. That can either slow down the game, or in this case, speed things up because you don't want to be left behind.